Hello, okay, good morning and welcome to the Breakfast News on Rajasabha Television, your one-stop morning show for top stories from India and across the globe. My name is Ashwarya Kapoor and here are the headlines. BJP hails NDA government's initiatives to address the farm sector challenges and address poverty. Party National Council passes resolution, Prime Minister Modi to address the meet today. India rejects Pakistani claims of raw involvement in November attack on Chinese consulate in Karachi. Tells Islamabad to take credible action on terror if it is serious about talks. First India-Central Asia dialogue in Uzbekistan from today. Key regional issues including enhancing connectivity with Afghanistan to be discussed. Sushma Suraj to co-chair meet with Uzbek counterpart. US will make major changes in H-1B visa program to attract talented professionals, says President Donald Trump. Assures potential path to citizenship, Indian IT professionals to benefit. And after historic Test Series win, India now set their eyes on the one-day series against Australia. First of the three-match series underway at Sydney. Our top focus is the BJP's uh, National Council meet. It is the concluding day today and describing Modi government as a pro-farmers, the BJP on Friday resolved at its national convention that farmers are the top most priority of the ruling dispensation. Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh proposed the resolution which highlighted initiatives taken by the party-led government for the agriculture sector which was seconded by Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Farnavis and BJP farmer wing head Virendra Singh. Unatam किसानों के हितैषी होने का स्वांग कर रही है, जबकि 10 वर्षों तक केंद्र में सत्ता में रहने के बावजूद यूपीए सरकार ने स्वामीनाथन आयोग की रिपोर्ट की तरफ नजर उठाकर देखा भी नहीं, लेकिन मैं कह सकता हूं कि आज हमारी सरकार ने जो कुछ भी किया है बहनों भाइयों, आप लोगों ने समाचार पत्रों में पढ़ा होगा, स्वामीन इस देश के किसानों को सुजलाम सुफलाम करने का काम किसी ने किया है तो मोदी जी की सरकार ने किया है अगर इस देश के किसान का भाग्य बदलने का काम किसी ने किया है तो मोदी जी की सरकार ने किया है और विश्वास के साथ कहता हो इस देश का किसान 2019 में अगर किसी के पीछे खड़ा होगा तो देश के प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी के पीछे खड़ा होगा the BJP also discussed another resolution on its achievements in the social sector under the title Garib Kalyan, which most prominently projected the government's uh, move to amend the constitution to provide 10% reservation for the economically backward in the general category. Union Minister Sushma Swaraj also hailed the government's Jandhan scheme. I want to tell you that Prime Minister Modi has been एनडीए संसदीय दल की बैठक का नेता चुने जाने के बाद अपने प्रथम उद्बोधन के प्रथम वाक्य में कहा था मेरी सरकार गरीबों को समर्पित सरकार होगी और यह वाक्य उनका घोष वाक्य बन गया उनका संकल्प बन गया और सरकार बनने के तुरंत बाद से वो इस कार्यक्रम की पूर्ति में लग गए सबसे पहली योजना बनी जनधन योजना कि प्रधानमंत्री जी ने जनधन योजना के साथ ही एक और योजना चलाई है जिसका नाम है डायरेक्ट बेनिफिट ट्रांसफर सीधे खातों में राशि और मैंने उन्हें बताया कि 434 434 योजनाएं देश में ऐसी चल रही हैं
जिनमें सीधा खाते में पैसा जाता है और आज अगर मैं आपको आंकड़ा दूं मित्रों तो पांच लाख पचास हजार करोड़ डायरेक्ट बेनिफिट ट्रांसफर हुआ है लोगों के खातों पांच लाख नहीं पचास हजार नहीं पांच लाख पचास हजार करोड़ की राशि सरकारी तिजोरों से निकली है और सीधे खातों में गई An earlier listing out the achievements of the Modi government, a party president Amit Shah exuded confidence that the BJP will once again form the government at the centre. Speaking at the inaugural address, uh, Amit Shah dismissed the proposed uh, grand alliance of the opposition parties as a sham. In a speech that lasted over an hour, Amit Shah asserted that the BJP wants uh, the Ram Temple in Ayodhya to be constructed at the earliest. Over 12,000 delegates are participating in the two-day national convention. which will conclude today prime minister narendra modi is slated to deliver the concluding speech ek dusre ke sath ek sofe par na baithne wale aaj haath mila mila kar utha utha kar kyu ghoom rahe kyunki unko malum hai ki akele modi ji ko harana asambhav hai isliye wo ikhatta hue kya hai gathbandhan main aapko batana chahta hu ek gathbandhan dhakosla hai kuch nahi विजयी नेता हमारा नेतृत्व करा है उसके नेतृत्व में 2019 के अंदर फिर से एक बार भारतीय जनता पार्टी के पूर्ण बहुमत के साथ एनडीए की सरकार बनाने का संकल्प लेकर हमें जाना है और मित्रों मैं आपको एक बार कहना चाहता हूं एक बार 2019 की सरकार बना दीजिए भारत माता को विश्व गुरु के स्थान पर बैठने से कोई रोक नहीं सकता मोदी जी विश्व में भारत का गौरव बढ़ाने में कोई कसर नहीं मित्रों सुप्रीम कोर्ट में केस चल रहा है हम प्रयास कर रहे हैं हम प्रयास कर रहे हैं कि जल्द से जल्द केस का निपटारा हो हमने कहा है कि संवैधानिक रूप से राम मंदिर का निर्माण होगा मगर कांग्रेस पार्टी अंदर रोड अटकाने का एक भी मौका जाने नहीं देती एंड फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर अरुण जेटली ऑन फ्राइडे असर्टेड दैट द स्ट्रॉन्ग पॉलिसीज ऑफ द एनडीए गवर्नमेंट हैव बेनिफिटेड पुअर एंड द मिडिल क्लासेस इन अ फेसबुक ब्लॉग पोस्ट ही सेड दैट 10% रिजर्वेशन फॉर इकोनॉमिकली वीकर सेक्शंस डज नॉट कंट्रोवीन द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ही आल्सो सेड दैट इट वाज द फर्स्ट 5 ईयर टेन्योर ऑफ अ गवर्नमेंट वेयर इंडिया हैज कंसिस्टेंटली रिमेंड द फास्टेस्ट ग्रोइंग इकॉनमी इन द वर्ल्ड Jaitley noted that the prime minister's decision to force an agenda for poverty-based reservation is the greatest concern for poor across the general categories. The minister said that in the last five years, not a single tax has been increased and GST has been brought down on most commodities. The finance minister also listed out the measures taken by the government for the upliftment and economic empowerment of the poor. And on to the other top story this morning India has rejected uh, Pakistan's allegation that Rao was involved in the November terrorist attack on the Chinese consulate in Karachi rejecting the allegations as a uh, fabricated and scurrilous India said that Pakistan must stop uh, pointing fingers at others for such terrorist incidents instead it needs to look inwards and take uh, credible action against support to terrorism and terror infrastructure in its territories reacting to pakistani prime minister's statement that india was not responding to peace overtures india said that there was no seriousness in islamabad's offer for talks as it continued to extend explicit support to terror organizations and was uh, not trying to mainstream them ki ek dekha ja raha hai ki jo terrorist organizations hain unko wo kis tarah se mainstream karne ki koshish kar rahe hain इसका कारण सिर्फ यही है कि जो उनका अपना प्रॉब्लम है जो फाइनेंशियल वोज हैं उनके उससे वो अपना अटेंशन डिफ्लेक्ट करना चाहते हैं और कैसे करें ये ये दूसरे कंट्री के बारे में बयान दे देंगे तो मुझे लगता है कि ये जो उनकी उनका स्टेटमेंट है कि हम बात करना चाहते हैं इसमें कोई सीरियसनेस नहीं है और इसको किसी एक्शन से बैकअप करना पड़ेगा 
And the first India-Central Asia dialogue will be held in Uzbekistan from today. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj is representing India at the meet during which key regional issues, including enhancing connectivity with Afghanistan, will be discussed. Swaraj will be in Samarkand for the meet, of which she will co-chair with her Uzbek counterpart. The Foreign Minister of Afghanistan will participate in the dialogue as a special invitee. Foreign Ministers of the Kyrgyz Republic, Tajikistan and Turkmenistan and the first Deputy Foreign Minister of Kazakhstan will also participate. The MEA said that the dialogue is an important initiative to enhance cooperation in wide-ranging spheres, including exploring ways to substantially enhance India's economic involvement in business and development sector of Central Asia. It will also discuss our on developing viable connectivity options between India and Afghanistan and Central Asia to further facilitate trade and economic activity in the region. And Minister of State for External Affairs V.K. Singh announced the dates for the Pravasi Bharti Divas are to be held in Varanasi from 21st to 23rd of January. The Indian diaspora will also have the opportunity to participate in Kumbh Mela and attend the Republic Day Parade. Usually held on 9th of January, this year's Pravasi Bharatiya Divas is postponed to the month end as the ministry received many requests from the members of the Indian diaspora to attend the Kumbh Mela and the Republic Day Parade. The youth Pravasi Bharatiya Divas will be the highlight of the first day while Prime Minister Narendra Modi will take part in the official inauguration on the 22nd of January. The chief guest for that event will be Mauritius Prime Minister Praveen Jognath. The ministry has received 5,000 registrations this year from across the globe. We have kept the date of 21, 22, 24. We will take them to Kumbh. We will take them to Delhi so that we can see the parade of Gantanta Devas in Kumbh. In Kumbh, we will take them to Kumbh. उनके उस दिन का खर्चा उत्तर प्रदेश सरकार कर रही है क्योंकि कुंभ के अंदर उन्होंने पहले बहुत बड़ा एक बंदोबस्त किया बहुत बड़ा इंजाम किया पिछली बार टोटल जाकर हमारे और बाहर के सारे मिलाकर और उसमें ज्यादातर भारतीय ज्यादा थे पांच हजार के करीब की नफरी हुई थी क्योंकि आपके पास रजिस्ट्रेशन पांच हजार हो गए and in related news, in the wake of the upcoming uh, Kumbh Mela at Prayagraj in Uttar Pradesh, the police is leaving no stone unturned to ensure the smooth conduct of the entire program. They are keeping a strong vigil and monitor the areas adjoining the banks of River Ganga and its tributaries. Here are all the details. The 55-day long Kumbh Mela, the largest congregation in the world, will start on January 15th. It will end on March 4th. Over 130 million pilgrims are expected to take part in the festival. Devotees are thronging Prayagraj with the belief that taking a dip in the holy water will pave way for salvation and rid them of their sins. Security arrangements have been beefed up for this massive congregation. The Uttar Pradesh police will keep a strong vigil and monitor areas adjoining the Ganga and its tributaries. Intelligence agencies, central police forces and contingents of civil police have been deployed tactfully to work in a coordinated manner. Itna Surachha Bal, aur hum log Gota Khor, Jal Police aur PAC Bal, jo bhi lagay hain, वो अपनी ड्यूटी पर आप देखेंगे पूरा संगम आगे चल के देखते हैं हर जगह आपको तैनात मिलेंगे अलर्ट हैं किसी प्रकार के इसी दुर्घटना होने की दूर दूर तक मुझे संभावना नजर नहीं आती है इन ऑर्डर टू प्रिवेंट एनी मिस हैप्स फाइव किलोमीटर लॉन्ग फ्लोटिंग बॉक्सेस हैव बीन अरेंज्ड अलोंग द रिवर लाइन ये करीब पांच किलोमीटर लंबा जो आप किनारे किनारे बैरिकेडिंग देख रहे हैं ये पानी ये पांच किलोमीटर लंबे लगे हैं गंगा के दोनों गंगा और यमुना के दोनों किनारे पे ताकि आ, कोई नहाने वाला आदमी बह के अंदर न चला जाए या अगर कोई खतरनाक जल जीव पानी में है तो वो आदमी को पकड़ने के लिए इधर न आ जाए अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस देर आर ऑल्सो सेवरल फर्स्ट इन कुंभ कॉन्ग्रीगेशन फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम 
flags of 71 countries have been put up to promote the festival across the world. Navikram Singh's report for Rajya Sabha TV. On to some other news now. The Supreme Court on Friday gave its nod uh, to ongoing projects under the government's ambitious uh, Chardham Development Plan. Now, the project aims to connect the four holy towns of Uttarakhand, namely Yamunotri, Gangotri, Kedarnath and Badrinath, by all-weather roads. However, the top court said that a stay on stall projects under the plan uh, would continue till further orders. The Supreme Court bench also asked the centre to file its affidavit on a plea seeking a stay on the order of the National Green Tribunal clearing the project. The petitioner, NGO Citizens for Green Doon, uh, claimed that uh, the project would cause an irreversible damage to the ecology. The NGT gave its nod to the project on uh, September 26th with some safeguards and constituted a committee to monitor it in view of larger public interest. On 26th of November, the Supreme Court had sought the centre's response on why it should not stay the NGT order clearing the project. And in breakfast news, we'll take a very short break here. We'll be right back with more news. Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. Welcome back after the break. Former CBI chief Alok Verma resigned from the IPS on Friday, a day after he was removed from his post by a high-powered committee. Now, refusing to take charge as Director General of Fire Services, Verma alleged that he was transferred on the basis of false, unsubstantiated and frivolous allegations made by only one person who was inimical to him. In his res resignation letter addressed to Secretary, Department of Personal and Training, Verma wrote that he had already superannuated on 31st of July 2017 and was only serving the government as a director CBI till 31st of January 2019 as the same was a fixed tenure role. Since he is no longer the CBI director and has already crossed the superannuation age for DG Fire Service, Civil Defence and Home Guards, he may be deemed as superannuated with immediate effect. Meanwhile, CBI No. 2, Rakesh Asana, faced a setback from the Delhi High Court on Friday. The court refused to quash the FIR lodged against the special CBI director on bribery allegations and vacated its interim order, granting him protection against criminal proceedings. The judge also refused to quash the FIR lodged against CBI Deputy Superintendent uh, Devendra Kumar and alleged middleman Manoj Prasad. The CBI has been told to complete investigation in the case within 10 weeks. And in a relief for the Congress leader and former finance minister P. Chidambaram, Delhi's Patiala House Court has extended interim protection from arrest for him and his son Karthi Chidambaram till 1st of February. This is in connection with the ASL Maxis case filed by the CBI and the ED against P. Chidambaram and his son. The matter was posted to be heard on 1st of February after Solicitor General Tushar Mehta, who was appearing for the CBI, told the court that the ongoing probe was about to be completed. Chidamram and his son Karthi were named in the charge sheet filed by the CBI in the case on 19th of July last year. The case relates uh, to alleged irregularities in the grant of Foreign Investment Promotion Board approval in the Aircel Maxis deal during Chidamram's tenure as the Finance Minister. The industrial production growth stood at 0.5% in November, largely due to a contraction in manufacturing activity. The industrial production or the factory output determined by the index of industrial production missed economists' expectations. In manufacturing, production contracted 0.4% in November, 
Growth in manufacturing had stood at 8.2% in the previous month and 10.4% in November 2017. The decline was mainly on account of fall in manufacturing, primarily in sectors such as metals, motor vehicles, etc. On to some political news now, Samajwadi Party President Akhilesh Yadav and BSP Chief Mayawati will address a joint press meet in Lucknow today. The press meet uh, is in uh, amid talks of announcement of an alliance and seat sharing for the Lok Sabha polls in the state. The top leadership of both the parties had met in New Delhi recently to discuss the broad parameters of an alliance to take on the BJP unitedly in the Lok Sabha elections. The Congress is not a part of the Grand Alliance in the state as yet. Last year, Yadav and Mayavati had decided to bury their differences and had contested three by polls and had won all. The RLD, that is a part of the Grand Alliance, said that it is yet to discuss a seat sharing with the BSP and the SP. The BJP has said that the Grand Alliance does not pose any challenge to it in the state. अभी सीटों की बातचीत नहीं हुई आप कितने परपक्षा कर रहे कि लड़ेंगे अभी जब सीटों की बातचीत हम जो गठबंधन के साथ ही उनसे करेंगे अगर दो सीट मिलती है तो क्या एलडी मार दी सीट रहेगी सीटों की गठबंधन की बात होगी तब ये बात बीजेपी के एक जो विस्तार है बीजेपी का जो व्यापकता है व्याप है वो खुद इन लोगों के लिए और अन्य विपक्षी दलों के लिए चुनौती है और उस चुनौती के चलते ये बहुत ही विपरूत ध्रुवों के दल जिनका कभी सपने में भी नमस्कार दुआ सलाम 25-26 सालों से नहीं हो रहा था वो मिल रहे हैं अपने अस्तित्व की रक्षा के लिए और बीजेपी काम कर रही है प्रदेश की देश की जनता की बेहतरी के लिए आज हम उनके लिए चुनौती हैं वो हमारे लिए आज भी कोई गंभीर चुनौती नहीं है और हाल के अनेक निर्णयों ने बीजेपी का ग्राफ इतना बढ़ाया है आज बीजेपी के संग सारा अति दलित और दलित वर्ग का शेष हिस्सा ओबीसी ओबीसी का आगे बढ़ा हिस्सा सब बीजेपी के साथ है सामान्य वर्ग आज पूरे इन सब साथियों के साथ मिलकर सहयोग कर रहा है इस नाते हमारे लिए वो कहीं चुनौती नहीं है and a Japanese uh, parliamentary delegation on Friday called on Rajya Sabha Deputy Chairman Harivansh. While welcoming uh, the delegation, Harivansh said that India accords a highest priority to Indo-Japan relationship, which is uh, deep-rooted and historical going back to the 6th century. He added that the relationship is based on common values of freedom, peace and democracy. The Japanese delegation is in New Delhi to strengthen parliamentary exchanges, economic and strategic relations. Rajya Sabha member Bhubaneswar Kalita and Rajya Sabha Secretary General Desh Deepak Verma were also present at the occasion. And Congress President Rahul Gandhi said on Friday that his party will grant special category status to Andhra Pradesh if voted to power in the upcoming general elections. He made the statement in his address to the Indian diaspora at a cricket stadium in Dubai on Friday. Gandhi is in the UAE on a two-day visit. Andhra Pradesh, remember, was bifurcated into Telangana and residuary Andhra Pradesh state on 2nd of June 2014. Special category status has been one of the major demands of all political parties in Andhra since the bifurcation and had made the Telugu Desam party pull out from the NDA. Rahul Gandhi also criticized the central government over several other issues, including GST. During his visit, Rahul Gandhi also met with the Vice President and the Prime Minister of the UAE, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. He will visit the UAE's capital, Abu Dhabi, today. The top international focus, U.S. President Donald Trump has assured H-1B visa holders that his administration will soon bring changes that will give them certainty to stay in America and a potential path to citizenship. Donald Trump on Friday tweeted that his administration is planning an overhaul of the U.S. policies on H-1B visa and will encourage talented and highly skilled people to pursue career options in the United States. Donald Trump's tweet comes as good news for Indian professionals, particularly in the IT sector, who currently have to wait for nearly a decade to get a green card or permanent legal residency. In the first two years of his presidency, Donald Trump administration made it tough for the H-1B visa holders over their overstay, extension and issuing of new visas to them. 
More news from the United States. A Democratic uh, Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard of Hawaii has declared that she was launching a U.S. presidential bid. If elected, the 37-year-old lawmaker would be the youngest president in the United States history. Now, she is the first Hindu member of Congress and its uh, first uh, Samoan American member. And she sits on the Foreign uh, Affairs Committee. Now, a war veteran, Gabbard was deployed in Iraq in 2005 and she maintained maintains her role as a member of the Hawaii National Guard. She drew criticism when she met secretly with the dictator Bashar al-Assad in Syria in 2017 during a fact-finding mission. She also met with the refugees and Syrian opposition leaders then. Now, Gabbard's announcement comes ahead of what is expected to be a wave of high-profile candidates throwing their hats in the ring. Senator Elizabeth Warren has formed a committee for a presidential bid and last week, uh, took a high-profile trip to the early voting state of Iowa. All the sports news now. The first one-day international match of the three-match series between India and Australia is underway at Sydney. After winning the toss, Australia elected to bat first and lost an early wicket in the form of opener Aaron Finch, who was there clean bowled by Bhuvneshwar Kumar for just six runs. Wicket keeper batsman Alex Carey and Usman Khwaja are still at the crease. The second one-day international will be played on Tuesday, while the third and final ODI will be played on Friday at uh, the Melbourne Cricket Ground. And earlier in the Test Series against Australia, India created history by winning their first ever Test Series 2-1 on the Australian soil. And with that, we wrap up this edition of uh, Breakfast News. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead.